Hey, what's up everyone? Thanks for tuning in. Today I've got a nice little video on how to calibrate your e-steps on a direct drive printer. I'll be using my new CR10 V3 for this. Uh, it's a little bit different of a format, takes a little bit more calculation, but in the end, uh, it's pretty much dead on. So sit back, relax, and let's get that printer calibrated. Let's go. All right, thanks for tuning in. Guys, again, it's DW, Darkwing Dad here, uh, showing you how to calibrate your E-steps on a direct drive. Uh, disclaimer, uh, I can't say that this particular method is going to work for all direct drives. Uh, what I can say is that it is a lot different uh, from some of the research that I've seen um, from other videos and other people I've talked to. Um, it's just a lot different of a process. So during this video, um, you don't have to worry about looking at my ugly mug. We're actually gonna be looking at uh, the control box of the printer and some calculations on how I got my E-steps calibrated. Um, you can, nice thing about this uh, particular printer and most direct drives is you can input it right on the box. You don't really have to uh, use a slicer, although you can put them in through your slicer. Um, I found this needed a little bit of fine tuning, so I was finding myself just doing it right directly from the box. Um, just a bit of advice, uh, have some filament because like I said, you do have to do this two to three times to actually get your E-steps right on. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is kind of flip the camera around and show you the calculations that I came up with and hopefully this helps you get your E-steps um, knocked in properly because with my other, uh, CR10S, my CR10 V2, and my CR10 Mini, it was really nothing like this. It, I pretty much got it on the first shot, whereas this, um, I calculated it, I tested it, it was off, redid it, it was over. Um, so like I said, it took me about three or four times to get this dead right, um, but I got a calculation here that should help you guys in getting this tuned in. So let me flip the camera around and show you what I did. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to locate what your factory e-steps are. Now, um, for most CR10s and Ender 3s, you can just go online or actually go right on the control box, and all of the factory e-steps are going to be the same. They're going to be either 93 or 94 or, you know, they're pretty much standard. And the way you can find those is just go to uh, control, go to motion, and then go to steps slash millimeters and when you go to e-steps it will show you your factory e-step configuration um, on my cr10 v2 and my cr10 s uh, they were 93 uh, i can't recall my cr10 mini i think it was 93 as well but there are some that are 95 there are some that are like 92.8 um, a lot of forms will list them but if you have that uh, access on your um on your printer um Again, you can just go to control, motion, and then it will tell you your factory e-step. This is my new e-step configuration, so we don't want to do that. Um, I'll actually show you what my factory e-step configuration was right here. So you can see it was 38.14, completely different from anything I've ever had. Um, and that's, you know, directly... Uh, related to the fact that it's a direct drive. So um, I had to basically do the same uh, calculation that we would for e steps, but I had to do it twice and then come up with an average sum. So let me get some paper here and I'll show you what I did. All right, so uh, don't mind my CR10 V3 actually printing. Um, I had a order come in and I had to start it right away. Um, but what I wanted to show you is basically um, the, the first steps that you want to do with any printer uh, is measure 100 millimeters of filament. Now, the best way to go about doing this is to have a uh, some sort of micrometer or accurate measuring tool uh, that will get you right at 
100 millimeters. So we'll get it right to 100, a little bit over. All right, so we wanna get it right at 100. And what you wanna do is have, you know, some sort of Sharpie or something to mark. And you wanna have um, a starting point and an end point. Now, usually um, I recommend on the CRV3, and I'll move this down here. Um, don't mind the um, masking tape here because I ran the wires for my BL Touch. I'll be doing a video on that. Um, I ran the wire, I have to install the firmware and everything, but I started taking it apart and then I had a print come in, so I was like, eh. But um, what I recommend on a direct drive or a uh, on the CR10V3, uh, is to make your mark from here and move up. So what I actually do is I'll make a mark a little bit up, uh, maybe like five or six millimeters from where the filament actually goes in. And all you wanna do is, you know, you wanna measure a hundred and mark it, you know, with your Sharpie and then just kind of, if your mark is here, you wanna pull that down to where it's right at the tip, okay? Um, and then what you're going to do is you're going to tell the machine to extrude 100 millimeters. So what I did with mine is I just measured it, you know, maybe a, a two or three centimeters above where this piece is and then just kind of fed it through with the gear so that it was lined up with 100 and then I told it to do 100 millimeters of filament. So I've got my CR10 V2 right behind me here. So I'll show you how to do that setup, how to get it to extrude 100 millimeters. All right, so here we are looking at the V2, and the reason why I'm using this is because, oh, my belt worn out. Uh, I was doing a print and I had a layer shift, didn't know why, uh, shut it off, checked the machine, and seen that. So my belt comes in tomorrow, so I'll have a video on that too. But all Creality machines are pretty much the same. It doesn't matter if it's an Ender 3 or whatever. Um, so again, on, like on, a, on a Bowden setup, um, don't mind my room, it's a mess. Um, the filament spool is here and the filament goes this way. Um, you know, you could measure it from here and you could measure 100, 100 millimeters that way. Um, obviously on the V3, it's up here. So that way we measure it that way. So it doesn't really matter where you, um, you know, where you, where you measure it from. It could be, you know, before the filament detector, I really wouldn't recommend after. Some people do it actually on this bowl. I think for a Bowden setup, your best option is before, uh, somewhere in this um, extruder guide. Um, I think the filament detector is best. So you would, you know, make one mark here and then measure 100 and make another mark and then tell it to extrude the filament and then measure your, your, your distance. Um, on the V3, like I said, I like to do it from here and up and then that way it's nice and easy you could do it from here too i mean you could make a mark here and go 100 down and then do the difference um, i think it's easier to do it right from where um, the filament's actually going in so um but what you have to do so after you've made your mark on your filament so let's pretend there's some filament here and you've got your marks um obviously you want to go to prepare and you want to you want to heat up your machine and everything so let's just say for all intents and purposes your machine's uh heat it up and you want to extrude the 100 millimeters what you do is you go to prepare you're going to go to move axis and then you're going to go to extruder and then what you're going to do is go to move 10 millimeters you can do one millimeter you're just going to be turning for a while um 10 is, is really the easiest uh, and all you're going to do is do basically 10 clicks so one two three four four five six seven eight nine and ten so that's going to tell it to extrude 100 millimeters obviously there is no filament uh in here so it's not it's not doing anything um but you're going to tell it to extrude 100 millimeters of filament and it will move as much as it can you could be over extruding, you could be under extruding. So if you're over extruding, it could move 106. If you're under extruding, it could move 94, 96, 97, whatever. Um, but I'll show you the calculation here and how I got my 
E-steps exact for my CR10 V3 or for other direct drive printers. Okay, so the equation for figuring out your E-steps never really changes. So let's say you, um, you, know, you measured your 100 millimeters. Um, you told the machine to extrude 100 millimeters. What we want to do is we want to take the amount of millimeters, the amount of filament we told the machine to extrude, and we want to multiply it by the factory E-step setting. Now, if you have something like a CR10 V2, a CR10S, a CR10 Mini, typically the factory value um, is usually 93, uh, it's 95, I think. Ender 3s are like, it's a weird one, it's like 92.8. Those, you can find those values on um, a lot of the forums, a lot of the pages. Um, you can find it right on your machine, um, kind of like how I showed you in the beginning of the video. Most of the uh, CR10 models, you can find this value right on the machine. So with the CR10 V3, each kind of has its own fingerprint or its own identity, so to speak. Um, I was talking to a couple guys, some of them had, you know, it was like 414 or 420, so just, it was nothing like this. It, was, it wasn't it was a 90 value, which most printers have. Um, why that is with the direct drives, I, I don't really know. I'm assuming it's something with the way that the drives are calibrated from the factory that give them that value. But that identity value, that individual value is what you need to put here. So in my case, it was... 382.14. So what we have to do is we have to take 100 millimeters of filament, run it through the machine, figure out what it actually extrudes, take that value and divide it by this. So we take 100, we multiply it by 382.14, and I'm doing my actual equation on my machine. So 382.14 times 100 is 38,214. Okay, so when I took 100 millimeters of filament and ran it through my CR10 V3, uh, it came up 20.1 short. Okay, so we told it to do 100, and it, we were short by 20.1. That's huge. That's a that is a that is a very uncalibrated machine. So the difference of that is 79.9. That's what we want to divide it by. So, you know, let's say, you know, like on my CR10 V2, I think it was off by like five or six millimeters. So here I would have put, you know, 95 point whatever, or whatever the value is. If you're over extruding, let's say you over extruded by 2.3 millimeters, you would put 102.3. But in my case, I was under by 20.1. So I put 79.9 and I'm going to divide 38,214 by 79.9. So we'll figure that out. So we'll clear this out and we're going to take our E-step, factory E-step value, so 38,214 because we multiplied these two together to get that, and we're going to divide it by 79.9. Oops. So I come up with 478.27. So I'm thinking, all right, cool, that's my new E-step value. So there's two ways that you can um, input your E-step value. One, you can um, put it into Cura under your profile, and I'll show you how to do that at the end of the video, or you can put it right into, into your machine, and I'll also show you that. So what I did is I just input it into my machine, and again, I repeated this process. So I, I took 100 millimeters, just to make sure, I took 100 millimeters of filament, ran it through the machine, thinking this was my new E-step value. Wrong. I was over by 16.1 millimeters. So I went from being under, from under extruding from the factory 20.1. Now I'm over extruding 16.1 with this value. So I'm, I'm kind of scratching my head because, you know, my last three printers I did it on, it was, it was pretty much dead on. It might've been off by 
you know, a fifth or something like that. Nothing crazy. I might have had to tweak it down, but it was pretty much dead on, okay? This is, now you're way over extruding. So that's, this is almost just as bad as that. So I say, okay, so what I do is I, I repeat this process. So again, I told the machine to extrude 100 millimeters of filament and I multiplied it by this, because this, this is our new E-step that we put in. Whether you put it in through Kira or right in the machine, this is our new E-step. But this new E-step has given us this. We don't want this. We want zero. We want it exact. We don't want anything over or anything over, under. So we, again, do that. So we just take that value and multiply it by 100, and we get 47,827, okay? So now what we want to do is we want to divide this by what we were either over or under. So the first time we were under, but this time we're over. So now we need to divide this by what we were over plus that. So 116.1. So I'm like, okay, this, this has to be it. Okay, so we take that, we divide it by 116.1 and we get 411.94. So now I'm kind of looking at things, I'm like, okay, you know, we were in the threes here, we were in the high threes here, and this, this put me under by 20. Then we jump up to the, you know, high fours, but that over extruded me by 16.1. This has to be it. I mean, there's, there's no way it could be wrong, right? So I repeat the process. I take 100 millimeters of filament. I run it through the machine. Sure enough, now I'm under by 3.5. So I've had to do this process three times, okay? I was under by a ton. I was over by quite a bit. Now I'm off by just a little bit. So to me, usually when you calibrate a machine, this is around about what you're usually off from the factory. You're usually off by four or five, maybe six millimeters or you're, um, you're under by that. So I'm like, okay, this, th this has to be it, okay? We'll, we'll do this one more time. So what we do is again, is we take 100, because that's what we want the machine to do, and we pop this guy here, we multiply these by 100, and we get 41,194. And then we are going to divide it by 96.5. So we take 100, multiply by 4. Oh, 100, multiply by 4, 11.94. I have no idea why I cleared that out, by the way. So yeah, we get 41,194, and then we want to divide it by what we were off. So we are under 3.5, so 3.5 minus 100 is 96.5. So we divide this by 96.5, and we get 426.88, okay? So now, I'm looking at this, and I'm like, okay. At 47, we were up 16. At 41, we were down 3.5. Is this going to give me the right amount? So I ran this through, and again, I was, I was over. So I'm like, and I was over 2.15, and I'm like, this is just getting, now it's just getting silly, okay? So this is what I did. I said, I could, I could continue to repeat the process and that's probably the right way to do it. I'm just telling you what I did, okay? I took 426 and 411.94. I don't, again, I don't know why I cleared that out. Um, 426.88 plus 411.94. And it gave me 838.82, and I divided it by two, and I got 491.41. So I looked at it and I said, let me just try this, okay? So I put this value in at my E-steps, 
And sure enough, it was almost dead on. I had to turn it down to 419.17 to get it pretty much just exact. But overall, that's how I got my E-step value. Um, I, I just kind of looked at it as I was looking at what I was off and what I was over. And I took these two values, I added them together, and then I just divided them by two. That's what I got. And my actual E-step value is 419.17 because I kept going through and doing all this and in, in, in my eyes kind of wasting filament. Um, it may work for you. It may not. Um, but what I can tell you is if you are trying to calibrate your E-steps in a direct drive, you will get different variables. Um, I've talked to a couple guys on the forums and they said, yeah, it, that's that's kind of the same thing that I ran into. And if you keep doing this formula, so you could repeat this formula with this value being over and eventually you would get the right value. I just kind of got sick of wasting filament. So I just took these two, ran it through one more and then tweaked it down a little bit and boom, it was good at four 419.17. So when you are doing a direct drive E-step calibration, do not think that the first time you do this is going to be it. Always check your work. And you should really do that with all of your printers. You know, after you get this initial e new E-step value, run 100 millimeters through and make sure it's, you know, measure and then make sure it's exact. And if it's not, you're going to have to repeat the, you know, figure this out, repeat the process. So that was my process. Like I said, from the bat, I was under 20, then I was over 16, then I was under three, then I was over two. So then I just took these values and said, all right, let me figure it out. Because I think at the pace I was going, whatever E-step value this would have been, I probably would have been under like 1.25. So I just kind of figured that out and it, and it worked out for me. So um, again, with the direct drive, they have their own kind of fingerprint. That factory E-step value you need to use. And it's going to be different with every machine, at least for the CR10 V3. I haven't talked to... Um, anybody with like artillery sidewinders, I'm saying for a Creality machine, whatever your fact, whatever, when it comes from the factory, whatever that E-step value says, that is what you need to use. And that's what you use to figure out your E-step value. So, um, that's what I did to figure mine out. Hopefully this shed some light. Don't get frustrated. Um, it is something you're going to have to repeat three to four times. Um, a little bit of math and a little bit of ingenuity goes a long way, but like I said, on this, I was pretty close. And you know, you you know, you could sit there and say, well, if you did it one more time, you might have been at 419.17. I think it would have taken another two to three times. And at that point I was like, I just wanted to get the E-steps done and get the print started. So um, like I said, when I printed this, it was off by, it was off by a smidge. And I just threw a number in there. It was actually, I put 419.25 in and it was off by a smidge. And then I did 419.17 and it was perfect. So, um, as hypocritical as it might sound, and I'm like, oh, I wanted to save filament, but I don't know. I just wanted to overcome the beast. So, um, but use this method, guys. Like I said, this is always going to be your calculation. What you tell the machine to do, multiplied by your factory e steps, divided by what the machine actually did. Um, so that's the same. That's going to be the same for all printers, uh, except you're going to, you know, some Creality machines. This my, I remember my CR10S had 93, my V2 uh, had 93, my Mini had 93, but I know some. Different Creality machines have 95. Some Enders have like a weird 92 or 91.8 or something like that. So check on the forms, check on your machine. What I'll do is I'll actually fire up the V2 and show you how to check your what your factory E-step value is. Okay, so this machine is... Actually, this machine might go back because I did unplug it and move it. Um, but to check to see what your factory E-step um, settings are, or value is, I should say, uh, you're going to go to Control, you're going to go to Motion, and you're going to go to steps slash mm or millimeters. And no, so this one did stay calibrated because I did unplug it and move it because I was checking the belt. Um, well, I was checking the printer because I had a layer shift and I don't, didn't know why. And lo and behold, you know, this, uh, this, this frayed belt here, which is, that's, that's bad. So I'm waiting for the replacement to come in. Um, so if your machine is not calibrated, again, to find the factory steps, hit the center button go to control, go to motion, and then go down to steps slash millimeter. If you've not done your E-steps or you unplug your machine and leave it long enough, it will reset itself. 98.72 is my adjusted E-steps. I've already calibrated on this machine, but if you haven't done it and you need to know what value to put here, 
you would just look right here and it would say either 93 or 95 and you would put that value right there. So that's how you find out your um, factory E-steps. Now, most machines, what you can actually do is, so let's say you, you know, you've calibrated your machine and your new E-step value was, what did I say, mine was 419.17. You can actually go into your machine here and you can select this and you can adjust this. Now I'll warn you, it is a lot of turning. <laughs> That's why a lot of times it's easier to go into Kira. So with this, you know, going from here to here, I just typed it into Kira. Um, and I'll show you how to do that real quick because it took forever, to, it, would, it takes forever to turn. I mean, so 98.72, go back there. It takes a while to turn to get to that value. Let's say you had to reset this to, you know, 101.23 or something. You're turning for a while. So I, uh, I just put it into Kira because it was way easier. And turning faster doesn't help. It actually makes it worse. So what I'll do is I'll show you real quick how to um, put those E-steps in Kira. All right, so here we are in Cura, and yes, I am running 3.6. I just like the way the layout is a little bit more. What you want to do is you want to go to settings. After you created your profile, um, have your, your bed type and everything, all everything set up, all your measurements, um, you want to go to settings, you want to go to printer. You want to make sure that the if you have multiple printers, you want to make sure that the printer that you are adjusting or modifying does have a little black dot next to it. So I'm going to show you the V2 first just because that was the one I showed you what the factory E-steps are. You're going to manage printers, make sure it's still highlighted here, go to machine settings, and all the way at the bottom here, just below that G92 prompt, you'll see it says M92 E98.72. So this was not here when I set the machine up. You put this code in and it will put in your new E-step. So that new value that you create, uh, if you go back and watch the CR10 V2 video I did, the setup of it and the calibration, you will notice that the E-steps are the same. So uh, M92 E98.72, uh, you put that right there, uh, you hit close, and they'll stay there forever. They'll never go away. So if you go back to it, you can see they're still there. So now we'll switch over to the V3, which I just, I had my 10S, and I just kind of modified the profile a little bit. Um, the CR10, this is my mini, and then the V2 is the V2, and then the S is the V3, actually. So we want to click activate to activate that printer. And it just takes a second. And then we want to go back to machine settings. Now remember, we had 419.17. And you can see the same thing just below that G92 prompt is M92 E419.17. That value extrudes 100 millimeters of filament exactly. So um, all you would do is basically, like I said, um, I'll just control C this. When you set yours up, that that will not be there. So what you do is you just basically take um, your little cursor and you would type in, make sure your cat box, M92 E419.17. And you hit close and it will never go away as long as you hit close. You can see it's still there. So then that way, when you are slicing whatever you're slicing and printing whatever you're printing, you're extruding exactly 100 millimeters. So that's pretty much it, guys. Uh, I will do a closeout on this video, and we'll wrap things up. All right, well, that's pretty much it, guys. Um, like I said, with the direct drives, uh, it takes a little bit more fine-tuning. You need a little bit more patience. Uh, it is a little bit different because... In my experience, uh, you do have to repeat that uh, calculation a couple times um, and just do some fine-tuning fine right off of the machine to get your E-steps exact. But uh, I can say so far, my direct drive, my, my CR10 V3, um, it has definitely um, printed more efficiently um, and a little bit smoother. Um, one thing you have to understand that, you know, you can buy the most expensive printer, expensive printer in the world, but if it's not fine-tuned, if it's not calibrated, if it's not set up, um, you can still get sloppy prints. And mistakes will happen. You know, I do a lot of long prints. Um, belts get loose. Rollers get loose. Um, 
beds get unleveled. Um, so doing things like silicone bed mounts, you can see I've already um, got the BL Touch set up. It's not installed, but I'm doing that strictly because my direct drive is going to do a lot of long prints. So I will be installing silicone bed mounts uh, into that, but I didn't want to do that uh, until I got the BL Touch. So I do have to get the BL Touch set up on that. I will be doing a video on that. Um, it'll show firmware installation. Um, installing the cable and the BL Touch really isn't that hard. Um, and then obviously with my V2, I'll also be doing a video on how to replace your Y belt. Um, and really I'm gonna kind of look and see why it did that because I've never had that happen with any of my printers. So um, honestly, that was something I, I just must have missed from the setup. Um, the belt seemed fine, but obviously it was rubbing and it really didn't take much. I mean, I did a... Um, I did a couple of Dr. Doom masks off that. Um, they were printed at a slower speed. Chances are if I would have printed it higher at a faster speed, it probably would have just snapped the belt. Um, but I'm going to go through and, and, and install that new belt. So I'll have a video for that and kind of show you guys. Getting off topic though, back to the direct drive. Um, I don't personally know. Like I said, I've talked to a couple people and they said that they did have to do that calculation a couple times. So um, from the research that I've done, each printer has its own, like I said, fingerprint uh, setup of, of factory e step. So you may get 38.15, you may get 490 something. Use that value, use the same equation. You may or may not have to um, figure it out. Some of the people that I've talked to, um, they've said, yeah, they've had to do it a couple times as well. Um, if you haven't, please share your experience with me um, so others, um, you know, kind of kind of understand, you know, um, if you have any tips or tricks for the V3, by all means, uh, drop in, drop a comment, uh, let me know what you think or let me know what you do. Um, you know, this is a community where, you know, we all kind of learn from each other and help each other out. Uh, you know, I've had great feedback from a lot of people really enjoying 3d printing myself. And that's why, um, I'm trying to do these videos just to give some insight and, uh, a, a, a different, uh, perspective of things. You know, um, there's a lot of things not nice. I mean, in 3d printing a little bit, but in a lot of industries, you have a lot of people who are sponsored and people who are paid to talk. You know, I'm not, I'm just doing this because I like it. It's a cool hobby. Um, you know, I'm, I'm making, making a little bit of money on the side, you know, printing some things for, for people. So, um, I'm trying to, share my experience with you because a lot of people are jumping into a lot of people get frustrated you know um people think it's you know you grab a file you download it you throw it in a slicer you hit go and it's supposed to work on the first try and it's not i mean we've all been there where you know it took us two days just to get our bed leveled and something to stick to the bed you know so that's why i do these videos just to kind of help people out and i like the feedback i like seeing people say hey yeah you know your video helped me or this and that yada yada so you know, if you are a subscriber, thank you so much for subscribing to the channel. Um, you know, if you found this content useful, give me a thumbs up. Uh, any feedback, if my audio is weird or um, something's wrong with the video, please let me know so I can know for future videos just to have things kind of fine-tuned, just like we want our printers. Um, if you're not a subscriber, please click the subscribe button. There's going to be a lot more useful videos. Like I said, just off those two printers in there, BL Touch install for a V3. Um, and then a belt change on a V2. I will be putting um, a BL Touch on the V2 as well. Um, I've just got projects going on. I've got to go work on Captain Rex. I've got to finish the Iron War Patriot helmet. Um, it never stops. On top of running a business full time as well and having three kids, um, it's 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 hard. But I do appreciate your guys' feedback. I do appreciate all the comments and the love. So keep it coming. It is awesome. Uh, you guys are making this channel grow. And you're the reason why I, I do these videos, you know, just to, to give some some sense of accomplishment. Like, yeah, I helped somebody. So, uh, but I do appreciate all the feedback and the views, guys. So if you like this video, let me know. If there's anything you'd like me to change or modify, just drop me a comment. If you have a question, drop me one too, and I'll be sure to answer back. That's it for now, guys. Um, I've actually got a couple other videos I've got to film today. Um, like I said, appreciate the feedback, guys, and we'll see you next time. Thanks.